uh, group gray. Maybe you can mute. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I will talk a little bit about exercise. I think it's number 10. Uh, it's about the uh, small music instrument thingy. Uh, so th the exercise is, I would say, rather open-ended. It's kind of connect some stuff and make sound. <laughs> um, where is it? Yeah, bring your own music instrument. So uh, I have made uh, already a, a demo here, which I prepared to showcase some of the things you can create. Uh, but uh, the main point is that you can actually use, you should be able to use a lot of the uh, things you've learned through the earlier exercises already to achieve the goal. Uh, you might not have tried to connect the piezo yet. Uh, piezo uh, uh, buzzer. Uh, it should be included, included in your kits and it looks uh, like this usually. And it might be hard to connect this one to uh, because the, the cables are so small. Uh, either you can try to put it into the breadboard or you can try to make use of the uh, crocodile clips that you should also have received, these ones for example. So for example you could maybe use, this, use these ones two together and clip them together like so, uh, for example. That could work. Uh, either way, you might have to experiment to find a way to hook up your uh, buzzer, your piezo buzzer. Um, you should connect it basically one, uh, uh, the red one to a pin of your choice. You have to code that, then how to use it. And black one you should of course connect to ground. <coughs> so I've already made a, a, an example here. We should, should, should see if it works. Well, it's not working. Okay, so now it's working. So what I have made is uh, kind of just following the instructions in the exercise 10, but I also added a second slider. So here we have like a kind of a slider. And I made the second slider to actually not only affect the pitch of the tone, but also affect uh, the vibra vibrato. So that is fun to play around with. And yeah, if you have some uh, inspiration, you could perhaps uh, make one more slider even after this to create something else. Maybe I could instead uh, create uh, controlling vibrato with this one. I could perhaps control uh, the volume or I could perhaps actually control the portamento. So when I slide, when I do this, it would, it would slowly go to that note instead of directly changing the pitch. So it would be like, uh, instead of that, it would be like, bah, bah. and depending on where I put this one, it could go with different speeds. So yeah, this is fun. Uh, yeah, it might be really hard to play a, a sensible melody on it. Uh, but of course, yeah, what I tried yesterday, I think the, uh, the electronics has changed a bit, but what I did yesterday was to find some notes. And I tried to mark them with just a pen underneath here. Yeah. But it might change, and uh, so it's it's hard to play. But it's uh, still rather nice and fun to play around with. So uh, what I've built here is kind of a little bit more elaborate version of exercise 10. Uh, but uh, I encourage you to experiment if you have the time. The main thing at work here is actually kind of a potentiometer. This is basically uh, the potentiometer like this one. Uh, and inside a normal potentiometer, uh, there is actually a, a, a coal-based uh, material that goes around all the way. And there is a metallic thing that goes on top of that coal-based thing. Uh, 
what is also coal based is actually graphi gra graphite. So we can use graph graphite to basically build our own potentiometer. And this is actually what I've done here. How do you ho hook up a potentiometer? Yeah, well, as we saw earlier, I, we can hook up one to five volts to VCC, which is called usually, and one to ground and the middle one to analog read. So what have I done here? Well, I draw a potentiometer here with graphite. I used the uh, copper tape, which is also included in the kit, to uh, connect these sides. And one thing I should point out here is that the copper tape is not that contact conductive on the underside or uh, on the sticky side. So uh, if you try to connect it with the sticky side on top of something, it's not really guaranteed that it will uh, let the electronics through so well or conduct the electronic uh, so well. So what I did on all of these places was actually to take uh, a bit of the tape, like this perhaps, and I took a smaller portion of it and I actually taped it to the underside of itself so that it would be like this. I will zoom in for you to see you better. Oh shit, it's hard to see. So basically here is the sticky side, but one small segment of the sticky side is actually having a non-sticky part of the copper tape on it. So I could then take this one and tape it with the sticky side down, and then part of that segment would actually be non-sticky uh, and going down. So here you can see this part is actually non-sticky while it's sticking on the parts around it. So that is what I have done on all of these places to get a uh, better connection for the crocodile clips when I put it on there. So what do we have then? Well, basically I was drawing with this one a lot. You should really put, be sure to make it so, uh, so you get a lot of graphite material because otherwise it will not conduct as well. Uh, so there will be resistance from here to there. And what we can do is actually we can measure it. So let's try that now. I will just take, take out my multimeter here, put it to measure resistance, and we can have a look at what is the value on this thing I just draw. Okay, so I see that it's almost six kilo ohms. So basically we have our, uh, ourselves created a resistor of six kilo ohms. <coughs> so that is the first part of the potentiometer. Uh, but then we need the, th the, the thing which I used to play. So basically what I did was uh, connect this side to ground and this side to uh, 5 volts and this side to um, analog in of the Arduino. Uh, that's almost what I did actually. So I should uh, show you what happens if I connect it to the analog in only. As you hear, there is always uh, a disturbing sound now. And that is because, uh, as I've been talking about before, when you're uh, trying to measure something, uh, basically now we are trying to measure the voltage in the air because this one is connected to nothing and as soon as I connect it to uh, this uh, uh, graphite uh, slider here we can of course measure the uh, voltage there because it's connected through the resistor to something but just measuring here when I'm not touching we get random values all over the place uh, and that is a problematic thing at least I think so because it sounds crappy so what I use as a small trick, uh, of course this is not strictly necessarily, it could be fine to use it like this and uh, it's already fun and, and, and uh, entertaining to play around with it like this. Uh, but because I wanted to have the silence when I'm not playing, I connected it also 
through a resistor here. And this resistor is connected directly to ground. Uh, so uh, when I'm not touching anything, it will still be connected to ground through that resistor. Basically, it's what we talked about before. It's a pull-down resistor. It pulls down the voltage on this thing here through the resistor to zero volts. And what I also did was to have in my code uh, that if the voltage is close to zero, it wouldn't play a note. Let's have a look at the code, actually. Um, so, as you see here, on this row, I basically said, uh, okay, so I have a first thing which is called is on. So when I press the button, I turn on and off the instrument, basically. But that is a detail I just made because it was convenient. Also not strictly necessary. The main takeaway here, which I'm talking about right now, is that I used the pull-down resistor so there would be a stable reading uh, of uh, almost zero when I'm not connecting uh, this one to anything because the resistor pulls it down to zero. I should, we should see if I can also have some output. So I actually have some printouts here. And uh, the first value, I think, uh, in these lines, this, these lines here, uh, they represent the value of analog uh, read zero, A zero. So basically what this one reads. And as you see, uh, it reads almost zero all the time. And that is because I connected it to the pull-down resistor. If I didn't do that, it will fluctuate all the time. Let's try that now. And you can see it goes up and down. And when I touch it like this, it will also affect it. And as soon as I touch uh, the graphite, you will get a stable reading. Uh, so this is why I used the pull-down resistor. Um, so that's a, a nice trick to know. What you should also be aware of uh, is that, uh, maybe I should draw some. Basically what I did was to have this. Let's zoom in a bit. I had an analog in, the A0, where I read something. And I have kind of uh, a potentiometer. Let's draw it like this. This is the graphite thing. And uh, we could call this actually a potentiometer because we basically built on one ourselves. And what I did was to connect one thing to uh, VCC, 5 volts, and one side to, uh, to ground. And uh, this one should then go on top of it and read the resistance over this thing. So it goes back and forth. And this affects the, uh, the, the voltage it reads on this part here. But so what I also did was to connect through this resistor here as a pull down also to ground. The value of this resistor will, of course, to some extent, uh, always affect uh, the red voltage because it basically pulls it down. Uh, when it's not connected here, it will, of course, pull it down to zero, but it will continue to pull it down always, also when this one connects to the graphite. So this will actually uh, offset the readings on the analog pin a bit. And what I did was that I actually chose a rather uh, big resistance here. So I think what I used was 10 kilo ohm. And that is a rather, rather large resistance. And uh, what is basically happening then is this one uh, will be so much greater, hopefully, than the resistance here on this one. Let's see actually what the resistance on, the, on that uh, one was. So I will take it here. And I will uh, measure the resistance from these two sides. Let's actually measure it directly on here. Oh, I think actually I, I'm not possible to 
read to measure it now because it's connected. So I will do like this. Now I should be able, hopefully. Damn. Not now either. Okay, so uh, yeah, I, I disconnected the cables because uh, because it was connected to the Arduino while I was trying to the measure the resistance. I got some interference, and you saw that the multimeter was blinking. So I temporarily disconnected uh, both the cables here, and now I can measure the resistance over here. So it's kind of uh, yeah, 15 kilo ohms or something like that. Uh, so rather big resistance. So I tried to choo choose uh, a resistor here, which was uh, as big as possible. Uh, probably I could have chosen an even bigger one uh, to uh, minimize the, uh, how much uh, this resistor affects uh, the potentiometer part uh, when I touch with the cable on the graphite uh, slider. Okay, so I think that is kind of a walkthrough of that part. Uh, uh, if you get to this exercise, uh, play around and have fun with it. I think it's really fun myself. Uh, it's cool that you can create uh, interactive things with kind of day-to-day -day objects. Uh, like we've done with the make your own button exercise. I think this is a continuation of that where you can uh, use thing that you find in your office basically to create interactive things. Uh, let's have a quick look at the code before I end. So, I mean, this code that I have made here, it's kind of overcomplicated, perhaps. So we could actually simplify it uh, and say, okay, I'm using some button in some way. Well, maybe skip that for now. Uh, I will just take away the code with the button. Uh, I will take away the code with the vibrato. Vi vibrato. Uh, I will take away the code that prints out the second analog read. I will take away the button logic. I will take away this part. So I would say here we kind of have the basic uh, setup for the code. I think this would still run, but without the vibrato and without the button, uh, as an example. Uh, what you see is that I basically put some uh, variables to quickly be able to set the high and low frequency, uh, basically the pitch of the instrument. So what I do is I read the analog re uh, value from A0, which is basically the value from the slider, and I map it from between 0 to 1023, as you might recognize. It's always the range for the analog input, and I remap that to 200 hertz, uh, from 200 hertz to 2000 hertz. So basically, uh, that makes me able to go up and down and uh, find the different notes on the slider. Uh, so also there here is where I basically output a note on uh, pin num. So this is the tone function. It's also mentioned in the lab PM that it's a nice function that you can use to quickly just create sound with a pizza buzzer. Uh, so basically I use pin 8 and I just input here the frequency that I have calculated earlier uh, up here and it will basically make that uh, pin uh, play a note with that frequency. And otherwise I will of course uh, call the no tone so basically it turns it off, turns, on, turns that one off. One detail to know about the tone function is that it uses actually uh, uh, timers or internal circuitry to create the tone and there are a few uh, pins that will, will be affected by this. I think it is pin 11 and 3 but I'm not completely sure. Let's have a look actually. Uh, if I just search tone Arduino we might be able to find some documentation. Yeah, I found it here. Notes and warnings. Uh, if you want to play different pitches and multiple pins, you need to call no tone on one pin for code tone. Okay, that's good to know. Here's a use of the tone function will interfere, interfere 
with pulse width modulation output, basically analog write uh, output or functions on pins 3 and 11. So that's good to know. So you can't use the tone and at the same time use pulse width modulation on pin 3 and 11. That's a good uh, thing to know. Okay, uh, that is that for now. Uh,